Today, we're installing a new GFCI outlet. Now, ground fault circuit interrupters are designed to keep you safe from electrical shock. But did you know that some brands test themselves every 15 minutes, while others, they test themselves every hour and a half? That's a big difference. Whatever you choose, you're gonna learn how to install it, and most importantly, check your work with one of these. Let's get started. Now the first thing you always want to do is test that your power is turned off at the breaker. Like there are no lights on the side. We are safe to open up our receptacle cover. That there, this little T, we call that a T slot. Tamper resistant. And that tells me that this receptacle has been upgraded from a 15 amp, which is standard in older homes, to a 20. I can already see something about this receptacle that I like. Now GFCIs are very wide and they're very deep. And as you can see here, I have a metal box. And there is a line of defense that I like to see that most electricians will do when working with metal boxes. And let's take a look at this right here. We're gonna carefully pull this out. So once we've pulled it out all the way, we can have a look with what we're dealing with. Already I can tell you the ground wire has popped out. Uh, I don't like to see that, but that could have been just due to excess force, okay. So we wanna remove, this is black electrical tape. So what you wanna do here is confirm that the power is off. Okay, now once we've pulled out our wires, once we pull it out, I can just remove the black electrical tape. Now this is what electricians will do to protect the screw terminals right here. And I do like to see this, especially because we have a metal box. The first thing we wanna do is identify the wires at the top. This is our line. Line is really important with GFCI, so I've just marked the top there. And on the other side, I'm gonna mark the wire that's coming into the top screw there with electrical tape. This is gonna make things a lot simpler for us coming up. Once I have those marked, I can now remove the screws here on the sides. So I'm gonna just back out this wire here, get that out of our way. And then you can move on to the other side and do that other wire. Let's back that one out. And these screws are just holding our wires in place. Now these two ones that are marked, we're doing that to make things easier. Just gonna move these out of our way and push them up to the top. And then we can now remove the two lower screws, which are our load screws. Now this ground wire should have been attached here. It came loose. So we're gonna make a better connection this time around. Once you've removed your receptacle, this is the old one I removed. Flip it over to the back side. This is really important. You wanna take a look, it says line. And the power goes in through this screw terminal at the top and this one here. So the two terminals at the top are your line, your power going in. Load is your power going out. Push them to the screw terminals right here. So critical to know, line is the power that's going into your receptacle. Load is the power that's going out to your other receptacles downstream. I have just turned the power off at the breaker and I'm gonna test now for our live wire or our hot wire. That is really what we're trying to identify right now. You do not wanna to touch any of these wires because one of them is hot. You hear that sound? That is telling me that that black wire is bringing the power into this receptacle. It is live. Don't touch it. I'm going to kill the power now and we can wire our receptacle. If you take a look at the indicator light right there, that will tell you something about the protection this GFCI has to offer. Now every GFCI will run a self test to make sure that you are protected from electrical shock. Now this one will self test every 15 minutes, while other brands, they might self test every hour and a half or 90 minutes. And that's something that you should keep in mind when you're selecting your GFCI. Let's get started with our new one right here. So this is a receptacle I picked up. You'll notice on the back side here on the underside, there is a ground screw terminal. And I'm just gonna take our ground wire first and insert that into the back here. There's a clamp and 
just gonna insert it in there. Push it all the way so it can go all the way in. A little bit of firm pressure there. And once it's, see, the tip is right there, you're gonna take your screwdriver and just tighten that. And that ground wire is an important feature to ground our metallic box here because this is metal. Next up is our line wire, our line terminals. And we wanna start with the neutral here. And the neutral is our white wire. So this is a white neutral line wire. And that is gonna go in this terminal here. Just gonna loosen this. And the clamp is gonna go forward. And it says line at the back there. This is line, remember we labeled these so it's keeping things much easier for us. Just put this back here. I'm just tipping the receptacle forward too so those clamps open up. I'm gonna apply full pressure. And you can check that these are, these are the right length with your wire gauge too. Yours may need to be trimmed, but I, these are the correct lengths. I'm just gonna tighten this. And also too, whenever you make a connection, you wanna make sure that it's secure there and you wanna just give it a tug test. And same here on the ground. Test it, make sure it is nice and secure. After you do your silver or your neutral terminal, we're gonna flip this over and we are gonna do the line side. Now this is the black wire, remember, and this is our hot wire. And that is gonna go here to that hot screw. Now, the hot wire, where the power is, I have a little trick here, and that is, you know it goes to the gold terminal because like, if you like sports, you wanna go for the gold, and the power likes to go for the gold, so that black wire, that hot wire, it's gonna go for the gold. And I just have to fit that in there better. There we go. And if it takes a couple tries to get it right where you want it, that's okay. Just take your time with this so that things line up and look how they should. Okay, we're just gonna tighten that one. At this point, we can now remove the tape, which is protecting the load terminals. And then we're gonna loosen up both sides here. Our gold screws or our brass screws. And then on the other side, we're just gonna loosen that one up as well. And when you tighten your screws, you are going in a clockwise direction. So next up, we wanna start with our neutral on the silver side here. And this bottom, again, is your load. So you wanna insert that in behind the clamp, straighten that out, push it in. You got good coverage. You also want your insulation. You see this insulation? That's how it should look. You don't want to have exposed wires out of the backside because you could cause a short. Now I'm just going to tighten that up. Nice and firm. Okay, now flip this over so you can see. And put it in behind the clamp here. Push it all the way. That's good. No insulation. It's all that insulation and nothing's exposed there. I'm gonna take that screw and tighten that up, okay? So that is looking good for now, but let's just test this and I have another step that I wanna do. So I've just backed out my screws here, bottom and top, and if you take a look at these terminals here, I like a layer of protection and I'm just using black electrical tape here. And I start at the top, and if you can see, where's the side? I like to go over those screw terminals. That's just gonna be some protection there. And I'm gonna wrap it, same on the other side. And this is because I have a metal box, it's a GFCI, so it's really wide. I'm just gonna go over this a couple times to make sure that these are covered. And I'm gonna get my scissors now. So nice and firm on the sides. And now we're just gonna push the wires neatly so I'm gonna go up on an angle. I don't know if you can see that. I've just gone up on an angle, sort of, to get those pushed in. So I'm gonna go on an angle and then straight in. And then I'll push that into our box. And then we're just gonna take our screwdriver and fasten those. 
and we want to get this straight. So you can put a level on top and a level on the sides. Obviously, I am going to be replacing this backsplash and furring out these walls. So if ever things look a disaster like this, know that <laughs> stay tuned for another video, right? To keep out the drafts, I'm going to put my face plate back on. And now we can test this out because there is a way to test GFCIs. There we go. Here we go, and now we can test out our receptacle. Showtime. Power is back on, let's test it out. It will come in the trip position. There is no light there, but you're gonna press here on the test button really hard. There you go. You can see now that it's green. I'm gonna use my receptacle tester. This is good for GFCIs. I'm gonna insert it. You can see the indicator there, the green light means go. It's correct, but we're gonna double check again. The GFCI button, it's good. And then we're just gonna make sure that it is engaged and we're good to go. Now, if you have a receptacle that is overcut, that means it has some big openings around the side. That is a big no-no, that is illegal, but you can learn how to fix it in this video right here. Check that out, some good tips.